Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is the greatest time of the day. From the center of the universe, New York City, it's the main event you've been waiting for. It's time to go in the cage with Cyclone! And another one bites the dust. Oi, oi, oi. My childhood is going, going, gone. Bundy, obviously, passing away. Not today, but last Monday, while the show was going on. Four deaths, and none of them was me. I know a lot of people would have lost money on that little bet. Um... But we have some quick breaking WWE news that Harlem Heat, Booker T, and Stevie Ray now are members, well, going to be members of the WWE Hall of Fame, which obviously includes DX, Honky Tonk Man, Tori Wilson, and I still say Vader. Vader deserves to be in the gosh darn Hall of Fame this year. Um, and you know, with the death of Bundy and, and Pedro and everybody else recently, it got me thinking about what I consider to be Mount Rushmore's. And here's the thing. Thousands and thousands of wrestlers, of boxers, of MMA fighters... To pick four, just four, is so hard and so defined by one's own mind of how something like that should be made up. So I think this would be my wrestling Mount Rushmore. Obviously, you got to put in Ric Flair. Ric, Ric Flair's demand. Um, Hogan for, for everything he's done. Andre, because he's Andre. And my fourth member, kind of controversial, you know, I'm not going to go with Vader. I'm not going to go with Bigelow. I'm not going with Taker or, or Austin. My fourth pick, The Rock. Look, I, I just think that, that Dwayne has done so much more. His overall resume is better than Austin's. Is it better than Taker's? Probably not. Taker, 20 years of dominance. I, something about it. I, I just got to put Dwayne Johnson in. So that is my wrestling Mount Rushmore. I know I'm going to catch a lot of heat from it, especially from Brian Horan, Rudy Asher, uh, Bernard Joseph Green. They're probably all going to chew me out about it since they're the big wrestling fans around here. Say la vie. That's the way it goes. My show, my picks. Nanner, nanner, nanner. Uh, I'm going to just point out a couple things about Fastlane from last night. Um, <laughs> That's right. You know, Shay, I don't even think I should do the woos because, honestly, I'd rather see a, a, a crowd in an arena do the wave than do the woos because nobody except Ric Flair deserves to woo. 
So, woohoo! Um, anyways, forgetting for a second that, that Rhonda is now turning heel. Which, by the way, Rhonda actually is a better heel than a face, but... Her shooting that wrestling's fake? One word. Duh! Whether she's going rogue or not, I don't really give a darn, but here's the truth about something. The Miz coming out in Cleveland Browns colors, that's a work. That is a work. I personally know that The Miz happens to be a Seattle Seahawks fan. I know that because a couple years ago for the Sirius XM NFL draft party, I got to talk to The Miz about it. The Miz happens to be a Seahawks fan. So the, the, this poop that he's coming out in Cleveland Browns colors, you know, uh-uh, no. It's not going to fly with me because I know the truth, Miz. You're a Hawks fan. You're one of the proud 12. Don't hide it. Um, which, by the way, so is Daniel Bryan. Um, obviously coming from, you know, Washington. But uh, I, I think the overall card I give a solid B plus to. Um, there was some good. There was some not so good. And one thing that I think I'm the only person that, that it bothers. There are too many outside the ring spots. Look, can everything be done inside the ring? No. But every match, every... It's just too much. It's overkill. And you know, it doesn't make sense for a storyline to have every single match, three, four, five, six, and seven spots outside the ring. It just doesn't make sense. It really doesn't. That's one thing that bothers me still to this day, as far as WWE writing is concerned. Um, I think I have a confession to make, and that's about Ashka. Um. I'm starting to like her, and I don't know if it's because she's truly talented or because of her hair being the color of cotton candy, and I'm fat, and I like to eat cotton candy. I just don't know. But I'm starting to really, really um, like what she brings to the ring. Uh, I think Nia Jax once again proved that she is as stiff as a board. She's going to kill somebody if she doesn't go back to, to get more training and, and more seasoning. Um, but I, I, I applaud the WWE for having someone like Nia Jax, a woman that, that's not petite, that's not a size zero, that's not a size two. You know, she's, she's a bigger girl and... A bigger woman. And I think the perfect way to book her from here on out after WrestleMania is like an enforcer role. I mean, look, she's, she's kind of like a female version, body-wise, of, of a Bam Bam Bigelow. I think the best thing for her, where she can flourish, is... Mouth shut, do nothing except pull someone out of a ring. Here, I just said five seconds ago, enough with the outside the ring spots. Cheat, do what you ever got to do. What you got to do, be the enforcer. That's where I think Nia Jax can absolutely flourish more than anywhere else. Um, as far as this Ronda, Charlotte, and Becky Lynch storyline is concerned. Here's the thing. They don't really need Rhonda. Becky and Charlotte is a super, super, super matchup. Okay, I could I could watch those two throw down 
a billion times a day. Seriously, I could. Billion with a B. I, I would watch it on a loop nonstop. They don't need Ronda. Now, look, if you're going to have it, the three of them fight for the championship, don't use a three-way. Okay? Have it in an elimination match where, where whoever wins is probably going to be the one to beat the other two. So the man becomes the man. Charlotte becomes the queen. Or Ronda becomes truly the badass female on the planet. That's what it should... It should be an elimination fight between the three of them. Uh, what else about Fastlane? Uh, Roman Reigns... It's good to see him back. Now, look, nobody except for Roman and his doctors truly know the state of his physical well-being or not, okay? I'm sure Roman has obviously told Hunter. I'm sure he's obviously told McMahon. But truly, the only ones that know what's going on inside of his body are his doctors and himself, whether he's going to be back long term or, or maybe for six to eight months and then hang him up for good, maybe this would be his last ride at the rodeo, so to speak. You start to think who would be the perfect way for him to leave, you know, with a storyline with. And is it going to be Brock? Probably not. Brock's still now in the USADA testing pool. Now, whether he fights Daniel Cormier, I don't know. I'm not Karnak. But it would make sense that Brock, at least for one fight, will come back to the UFC. And if that's the case, it's going to be against DC. Personally, I'd love to see him stick around for a couple of fights. Even though I hate Brock personally, I'd like to see him at heavyweight against John Jones. I'd like to see him, maybe Stipe, and that's if Stipe even stays in the UFC. I I know that Steep is getting pissed off. Um, maybe he leaves for Bellator. Probably not one championship now that he has a new baby. Probably not going to want to travel around the planet as much. I think what Roman Reigns finishes his career with for good this time is Drew McIntyre. It makes sense. He's he's fought just about everybody. You know, and the one good storyline left, I think. And maybe you think too. I don't know. Hit me up on the Facebook feed. Let me know if you agree with me. I think Drew McIntyre and Roman would be a perfect send-off for him. And then let him go, you know, right off in the sunset, spend time with the family. Because, look, you could be clear of leukemia one day and it comes back the very next day. You never know. So let him spend the rest of his life Greener pastures on a, you know, beach chair with, with like a margarita in his hand or whatever else he drinks in his hand. I think that's what would be best, you know. So now that we got the wrestling out of the way, what I want all of you guys to do is click share. It's really simple. All you do is go on the share button. It's simple. You don't need a hand. You don't need a fist. Just one finger. Hit share. Um, check out CycloneComedy.com. A bunch of stuff coming up, my, including my return to stand-up. Check out Psyche Prods on Facebook. P-R-O-D-Z. Um, effective Aggression. The best site ever for some great clothing. And some super sweet signed gloves. And by the way, there's going to be some more gloves coming in stock on EffectiveAggression.com 
in the next couple of days. But that's what we call in the business a tease right there. So, um, we got lots to talk about MMA. But when we come back, we're going to be talking the sweet science. Boxing! Right after this. This is Frank Edgar. This is the Barbarian, Tim Bosch. I'm World Series of Fighting undefeated lightweight champion, Justin Gaethje. The MMA legend, UFC Hall of Famer, Ice Man. Chuck it out. If you got the guts, step in the cage with Cyclone. Let's break down some boxing, all right? Let's start with Sean Porter. Sean Porter um, being the defending WBC welterweight champion of the world, taking on your Dinesh Ugas. Look, Sean Porter is a, I don't know if I could call him great. He is an outstanding. Standing boxer. That's what I can say about him. He's really, 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 really good. I wouldn't put him that 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 super level. First of all, he, he misses weight, has to come back and misses weight again. They scramble to find scissors, they cut his dreads. And then he just clears weight with, I think, four seconds left before he would have lost his title on the scale. We talk about missing weight cuts in MMA, especially the UFC, all the time. I'll cut him some slack because this is not an ongoing situation with him. This is an anomaly. So... Okay, you, you miss weight, we cut your hair, and, and you make weight. The way you fought, the way he fought against Ugas, look. If he fought like that against anyone else, against a Danny Jacobs, against a, a, an Errol Spence, against... A, anybody else in the welterweight division he'd get smoked he did barely just enough and to win a split decision that just shows you now look I, I get it you know judging can be skewed it's sometimes controversial no not the not really this time 50-51 one way, 50-51 the other way, give or take. Look, he is still, for what it's worth, the defending WBC welterweight champion. Calls out Errol Spence Jr. Errol is the best welterweight in the division. Period. Hands down, Errol Spence. As a matter of fact, up this coming Saturday night in Texas Stadium, AT&T Stadium in Dallas, Texas, in his hometown, takes on Mickey, uh, Mikey Garcia. Mikey, coming up two classes. Now, look, it's going to be a great fight. Like Floyd once said, someone's O has got to go. Look, Mickey... Uh, Mickey, Mikey Garcia, I keep calling him Mickey. Mikey Garcia is 39-0. He's one of the 
best fighters pound for pound today. One of the best. I'll give you credit. You're stepping up against a bigger, better fighter in Errol Spence. As far as I'm concerned, in wrestling, MMA, boxing, um, badminton, tic-tac-toe, hangman, I don't care what it is, a good little man, nine times out of ten, will always lose to a good big man. And that's what what happens this time around. Um, So saying that Errol wins Saturday against Mikey, does Errol then turn around and take on to, to, to you know, to, to unite the belts, to, to bring them together? Does he then take on Sean Porter? I don't know. Keith Thurman is sitting there. Danny, uh, Danny Jacobs is sitting there. There's lots of fish in the pool. If Sean Porter, like I said, comes out and was to fight Errol Spence the way he fought Ugas, he's going to get lit up. He's going to get lit up like a Christmas tree, and there's no two ways about it. Would I want to see that? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, It'll sell. I mean, it'll be a pay-per-view fight that'll I don't know, a million buys easy for that matchup that's providing Spence gets past Garcia and look if Garcia shocks the world okay and beats Errol Spence boxing will be turned over on its ear because there's just no two ways about it the, the, the book that is pre-written has Errol Spence uniting all those straps and becoming the unified welterweight champion. And that's just the way it is. Uh, and that got me thinking a little bit as far as a boxing Mount Rushmore. And look, here's the thing about a boxing Mount Rushmore. You're really talking about thousands of fighters through the years. To pick four... It's incredibly tough. And I guarantee you, if my wrestling Mount Rushmore isn't going to cause some controversy with you guys, the boxing one will. Take a look at that. Obviously, you have Muhammad Ali. You have to. My favorite of all time, because he spanned the, the from beginning to middle to end of time as far as I'm concerned... George Foreman. Sugar Ray Robinson has to be on the list because the pound-for-pound list was created because of Sugar Ray Robinson. There was no list pound-for-pound list before Sugar Ray. So Sugar Ray Leonard has to be on the Mount Rushmore list. And as far as I'm concerned, Julio Cesar Chavez is the fourth on the Mount Rushmore. Now look, obviously... I'm leaving off some huge names. I'm leaving off Joe Frazier, Ken Norton. I'm leaving off Lennox Lewis, Mike Tyson. There's a hundred other names. Rocky Marciano. I'm not putting Floyd Mayweather on my Mount Rushmore no matter what. There's just so many lists, but I. that's it. To pick four... Makes, you know, the, those Sophie's choices, you know. You know, McDonald's, Burger King, those, those are life's choices you got to make that, that are really hard. Um, and something else came out of this past weekend's Fox boxing card, and that is we talk Nigerians in MMA, especially in the UFC, between Kamara Usman, Francis Ngannou, that there's a big push. Well, there's a big push in boxing now as well with Nigerians. And there is a monster, monster heavyweight in boxing. And uh, 
Effie Jogba is now 9 and 0. He's not comp- he has 8 knockouts. He's gone the distance once. He is a freak. He is 6-5. He has like an 85-inch reach. He's one of the big guys. Now, is he anywhere near right now Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder, Anthony Joshua? No. Is he even anywhere near Jarrell Miller? No. I think I want to see, as far as his next opponent is concerned, someone like a Gerald Washington. I think Gerald Washington, if he was to beat him, can put him on the top 20 list. And then, if you're on the top 20 list, you start calling out names and you climb really fast. But I think Joe Washington is the, the measuring stick for F.A. Where, where you can judge just how good F.A. is going to be. You know? Uh, I think that's going to be it. And the other boxing news is Pauli Malinaji. Brooklyn boy. Pauli coming out of retirement. Like every single... God darn athlete wants to do. Look, he was, and this is how it came about. He was in Vegas, part of a Showtime shoot. He was on uh, MMA Junkies uh, podcast. The people from, the people, the powers that be from Bare Knuckle FC were there, they started talking. The talking led to more talks. And he's now going to be in bare knuckle fighting. Now look. Paulie retired because he was slowing down a little bit. He was slowing down with, with pillows on his fists. Bare knuckle tape ends here. It's bare knuckle. It's not going to end well. Yes, maybe on name recognition and face recognition, Paulie is better than everybody outside of Beck Rawlings that is in bare knuckle fighting. Possibly. I don't know. Maybe I'll give him that much. But these other fighters have been fighting. They've been staying, staying consistent. They have been in the fight mode, in the in the weight cut fight mode. Paulie hasn't. The last thing Paulie's done is spar with Connor and, and take that for what you want to take it as. It's not going to end well. And, and it's the one thing is someone that's not a fighter, that someone as a journalist. I want to smack athletes around when they want to come back. I get it. You, 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 you always think that, that there's just one more. Sometimes, no, there isn't one more. Sometimes, that's it. And I think that that's it for Paulie. And like I said, Paulie's going to get hurt. And I feel for him. So, that being said, I want you guys to, like I said before, I'm going to say again, I'm going to, and again, and again, and again, click, share, pretty please. I beg, you know, beg, do, do, do me a favor, okay? Dying man's last request. Click, share, all right? Thank you. Um, check out Psyche Prods on Facebook. Effective aggression. If, look, Summer Months, beautiful t-shirts, sizes small to 3XL, on effective aggression. You could pick something up for someone you like, someone you don't like, or for yourself. And, like I said, lots of autographed gloves, very good prices, um... Also, obviously, 
coming up after me. Pinups, cool, co- cool cats, and comics. And when we come back, we're gonna talk some fighting in a cage. Right after this. Hi, I'm Jim Miller. This is Dan Mergliata. I'm Derek Brunson. I'm Nick the Carney Lens, and you're locked into the cage with Cyclone. Okie now let's talk some cage action. And before we do that, it's time for me to give some props and to give some thanks. As I've posted, and, and you guys who follow the page know that it happened. Yesterday I started my play-by-play career over at Jack Hammer Promotions. And first of all, I want to thank Bobby Campbell for running a smooth promotion there's a lot of promotions that run nowhere near as good as bobby and jack hammer promotions is the biggest and the best out here on long island arguably very possibly i could say the best in new york state not just long island and i i i Put him and Jackhammer against anybody in New York State. Okay. Um, I had a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed it. Can't wait to do the next one. A little nervous at first, surprisingly, because I'm used to it. It's what I do. I'm kind of shocked I was a little gun-shy at first. But uh, next time out. My feet will be more planted under me, much more smoother, excuse me, as I burp underneath my breath, which was totally unprofessional, by the way. Um, But yeah, start going to Mulcahy's in Wanta for Jackhammer Promotions. And I'll tell you what, if you show up to a Jackhammer Promotions card, I am willing selfie with you normally I want some uh, De Niro for that I am willing to do that for free so come by we'll have a brewski after the show I'll take a selfie with you and we'll have a good time we'll talk about all the fights but Jackhammer Promotions is definitely something you guys should look into um Something else you guys should look into is the PFL. The PFL has announced Season 2's schedule. And look, I enjoy the PFL. At first, I didn't think I was going to like it. Hand on the Bible, God's honest truth. Really didn't think it was going to be good. But push comes to shove, I actually liked it. I really enjoyed it. I also enjoyed being credentialed for the championships on New Year's Eve. Hopefully, by the way, I will be credentialed this season. Um, But here's the thing. They had cards in Long Island, in Manhattan, at the Garden, at the Hulu Theater, in Chicago, in Washington, where the company is based out of. They announced that Season 2 is the first three weeks of the season, all just a couple miles. I think it's like that way, or maybe that way, or somewhere in that direction, at the Nassau Coliseum. The next three weeks, down south, 
in Atlanta, well, not totally down south, south from Long Island, down in Atlantic City. Those are your six regular season weeks, and I don't know why, and I don't understand why, they would cut off the Garden, Washington, where they're based out of, for Christ's sake, and Chicago. I, I don't understand why... I don't think it could be the, like the venues weren't available because th there's six weeks of a regular season. They could have flip-flopped things around. I'm not really sure why. It hasn't come out. If I get credentialed, I can assure you I will be asking Ray Cepho that very question of why only using two venues. Now, the postseason hasn't been announced yet. The dates, obviously... Or where they're going to be. Maybe that's where they're going to put the other events. I don't know. Maybe they'll split it. You know, Washington and Chicago, that. But once again, on December 31st, New Year's Eve, which I believe is a Tuesday this time around, will be at the Hulu Theater at Madison Square Garden. So, we'll see. Uh, now... Going back to Jackhammer for a minute, it was a kid show. And first of all, these kids are, some of them are, are more jacked than 25, 26 year old guys. Okay. I was really impressed by all their talent. What I was really liking was the fact that they were all wearing rash guards. Okay. I, I, I would assume that they would be, but the headgear. And that got me thinking maybe. With the way the injuries have gone in the world of MMA, you know, and, and CTE is bound to start popping up eventually. Maybe it's time that MMA fighters get forced to wear headgear. I, they wear them in the Olympic trials, you know, for boxing. I, I, I don't know. There's always been the theory, oh. CT is never going to be that bad in, in MMA because it's not just shots to the head. Those that do, even if it's one person coming down with CT, that's one too many as far as I'm concerned. Vandele Silva has the symptoms. Mark Hunt, symptoms. I don't know if that's what helped lead to Mirko Krokop's you know, having a stroke and being forced to retire. Um, BJ Penn, who's coming back for, God, I don't know why. He's 1-8 and 1 in his last 10 fights. If any other fighter, any other fighter was 1-8 and 1 in their last 10 fights, you MMA fans would be screaming bloody murder that they should be cut from the UFC. Why is it not the case for BJ Penn? Why does BJ Penn, in your eyes, get the pass? Because he's a Hall of Famer? I don't know why. But at this point in BJ's career, BJ is looking to come out of the cage in a body bag. And that might just happen with Clay Guida. Because even though Clay is like a, a gatekeeper in the division, the fact of the matter is, He's going to run right through BJ Penn. There's no denying that fact. So I'm thinking maybe fighters wear headgear just to be on the safe side. Or maybe they should, I don't know, wear goggles. And I'm not talking like like, like science goggles. Swimming goggles. Like Michael Phelps, like just over the eyes. Just remember, you know, the Megan Anderson, Kadzigan, you know, toe to the eye. Plus, it would also stop eye pokes. I don't know if that would be a, a good thing to have, you know, where, where, where you can't get punched in the eye, you can't get punched in the head. I, I, I don't know, but fighter safety has to be the be-all, end-all. And look, parents don't want their kids playing football because of CTE. You think punching, getting punched in the head? 
is less damaging than football? I don't know. I really don't know. But like I said, the headgear is really important as far as I'm concerned. And maybe, maybe the goggles. I, I actually like the goggles better than the headgear, but who knows? Um, and look, with BJ Penn and, 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 and his down spiraling down like the freaking Titanic, it got me thinking, and this is the only type of Mount Rushmore where I separated the men from the women. Just because the thousands and thousands of male MMA fighters and the hundreds of women fighters, it's just not fair. So I separated them. As far as I'm concerned, the men's version of MMA Mount Rushmore is this. Look, I put three heavyweights on there and a middleweight, welterweight. Okay. Fedor, as far as I'm concerned, just because of the gunslinging he did and pride. The, and same thing with Mirko Krokop. The, the two of them crushed over countless organizations for just about everybody on the planet. As a matter of fact, Mirko not only fought MMA, but kickboxing and glory. You know, you, his left le leg kick put you in the hospital. The right one would put you in the grave. Daniel Cormier, hands down, he has to be on the Mount Rushmore. He's one of the best ever. I don't believe John Jones is there because once you take a PD, as far as I'm concerned, you are ineligible. Now, true, Mirko, Fedor, there's question marks on. For the moment, I will say neither one took anything. I very well could be wrong. And if I'm wrong, this Mount Rushmore right here becomes null and void. And I think GSP, out of everybody that's not a heavyweight, is one of the best to ever walk the planet. Now, the women I took a much different take, and here's as far as the women are concerned. Obviously, for what she has meant to the sport, blowing it up, Ronda Rousey. And that's taking my personal feelings out because you all know I hate Ronda Rousey. Chris Cyborg, an absolute physical beast, okay, has to be on the Mount Rushmore. Amanda Nunes, who took the two of them out, has to be on the list because she took, if you take out half of the Mount Rushmore, guess what? You have to be on the Mount Rushmore yourself. And I could have gone Misha Tate. I could have gone a bunch of different directions, but I went uh, Megumi Fuji only because Megumi is what you call an OG, okay? She is truly an old gangster, okay? She was doing MMA on the women's side when there were no women, okay? That's why, as far as I'm concerned, and had something like 80-something fights in a career that she just recently retired from. She's a monster, and she deserves to be it. You know, knowledge needs to be given about her. You know, she needs to be followed. She needs, the masses need to know about her. So that's why, as far as I'm concerned, she rounds out the female MMA Mount Rushmore. Um, guys, click share, would you please? Be nice. Help me out. Help a brother out. Click share. Check out CycloneComedy.com. And remember, coming up in just a few minutes from now is Pinups Cool Cats and Comics once again. And you guys are going to share that show, too, because I'm counting on you to do that. Hook Dennis Newman 
and those guys up on that show. And when we come back, it's game time. See, like, if you ride the trains in New York City, you've heard of something called showtime. Well, when we come back, we got game time right after this. I'm Dennis Bermudez. Hi, I'm a creepy Ian McCall. Yo, I'm Kelvin Gastelum. This is Mark Goldberg. Yo, I'm the world's most dangerous man. Hall of Famer Ken Shamrock. And you're getting tapped out in the cage with Psycho. Okie So, obviously we're going to start with On This Day in MMA History. And a lot of Brazil. A lot of Brazil today. Um, Fight Night 106 happened today in MMA history. Um, obviously, it was. I just said it all a bunch of Brazil stuff. And it happened down in Brazil. Uh, Shogun Hua TKO'd Long Island's own Gian Volante. Um... Edson Barboso used a flying knee to KO, and it was one of the best knockouts I've ever seen against uh, Dariush. And obviously, Kevin Gastelum headlined against Vitor Belfort, which became a no contest after failed drug tests. Once again, people popping. Stop. Taking PEDs, please, people. Um, anyways, to continue the Brazil thing on this day, a couple Brazilians celebrating birthdays. Henzo Gracie, everyone's favorite Brazilian, Henzo Gracie, is 52 today. Rodrigo, lost my tongue there for a second. Rodrigo Gracie turns 44. Uh, who else's birthday? Oh, yeah. Uh, Livia Souza turns 30. No, turns 28. And turning 30 is Magomed Mutsayev. That's what happened in today's date in MMA history. Now, for everybody's truly favorite part of the show, Zeraffle. Okie dokie. Now, I let it slide last week. I let it slide this week. Guys, I need your questions written on the Psyche Prods thread page. Page thread. Let me try that again. I need your questions written on this thread on Psyche Prods by 12 noon Eastern Standard Time on Monday. Because I have to set up this roulette wheel. I can't do it any other time. 12 noon, this has to happen. So, here are the questions that I'm going to answer, and then one person, obviously, is going to win a prize. Question number one from Rudy Asher. Should JDS get DC next? No. No. If it's not going to be Brock, it should be John Jones or Stipe. And that's as far as DC. As far as JDS is concerned, maybe a Stipe trilogy. Although this the second fight, the, the rematch, Stipe went right through JDS. I don't know. 
Maybe it'd be different this time. I kind of like trilogies. It's 1-1. One, one. You might as well wrap it up. Or maybe JDS against Francis Ngannou. I kind of personally, though, rather see the Stipe trilogy. Um, yeah. That's just my personal choice. Question number two from Kenny Hodgkins. With Triple G joining Dazun, or Dazin, um, if you prefer to be fancy, do you think we will see him get another fight versus Canelo Alvarez this year? This year, eh, probably not. It's three months into the year, almost four months. Nothing's been talked yet. Another fight this year with Triple G and Canelo? Probably not. Maybe next year, maybe 2020. And I hope so. Because, remember, he has six fights left and he's retiring. Okay, now... Triple G cannot fight Canelo Alvarez with Mexican judges in Mexico with a Mexican referee because that, as we all know, is two slanted, one side. And the, the, the result, unless of a knockout, the result is a foregone conclusion. We know how it's going to end up. But what I'd like to see... Triple G uh, fight next is um, hmm. I'm thinking of a couple names right now. You know what? They all want to unite the belts, right? So I think Triple G should uh, fight the WBO uh, middleweight champion in Demetrius Andrade. That would be an interesting matchup. Uh, Demetrius, I think, is ranked like ninth overall. Against Triple G, I, I, I think Golovkin could... I almost would be positive that, you know, Golovkin would uh, finish him. But Golovkin against Demetrius and Josh would be a nice fight to see. Question number three comes from Bernard Joseph Green. Being UFC is such a physical sport. Time out. Bernard. Joseph. Mr. Green, sir. UFC is not a sport. UFC is a promotion. The sport is MMA. So I'm going to fix you right here. Being MMA is such a physical sport. Um... And time after time, deal with last-minute injuries affecting main and co-main events. What can they do to try to have replacements ready? Well, they do. They do that right now. They always have a third fighter ready, go through the weight cut. They get a smaller purse. If they make weight, okay, they have them at the ready. So they do. They do right now have a a third fighter ready at all times. Um, At least they started doing it more recently and consistently. Question number four from Greg LaBeouf. Is BJ Clay the swan song of two classic... Two classic warriors... Can't read my own handwriting. From an old era or names... That sell tickets. I don't know. I really don't know. Like I said before, Clay is a gatekeeper and BJ should not be fighting. No way in heck should he be fighting. So I don't know. I don't think they're going I don't think the card's gonna sell that good. Okay? I really don't. And look, I know BJ's gonna be the fan favorite because he's training in Brazil right now. Anyways, I don't know. But it's time now for the winner to be determined. And the winner is numero four, Greg LaBeouf, who got his question in. Even though it wasn't posted, he talked to me about it. Um, Congratulations, Greg. And by the way, congratulations on your son, Chael. 
not P. Sonnen. Although that would have been a nice nick middle name for your son. Just to let you know, Greg, if you would have named him Chael P. Sonnen LeBouf, that I don't know how the missus would have felt, but I think uh, that would have been pretty cool to have, being a Chael fan as you are. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, until next week, I am Cyclone saying, just because you are not an athlete, doesn't mean you cannot be an athletic supporter. Bye-bye!